Hi, everyone, and welcome to Behind the Numbers. I'm Dave Bookbinder, Managing Director at B. Riley Financial, and I'm also the author of the new ROI, Return on Individuals. And welcome to the program where we dig deeper to understand what really matters most in business. Today, I'm pleased to welcome my guest, Mike Malatesta, who is, in addition to being an entrepreneur, he's also the author of the book, Ownership, How Getting Selfish Got Me Unstuck. Mike, welcome to Behind the Numbers. Dave, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, lots to uncover here from you in, in terms of uh, the book and everything else that goes with it. But why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself first before you dive in? Yeah, sure. So um, in the beginning of 1992, I thought that I was on a path to becoming a CEO or a big time executive at a very large waste management company, Dave. And uh, in March of that year, in fact, right around this time on St. Patrick's Day of that year, instead of uh, that dream coming true, I was fired from that job instead. And I was very lost at that point, sort of not knowing, wasn't expecting that, didn't know what to do about it. And uh, fortunately, uh, I call him a messenger, but a messenger came along to me a couple of months after and said, hey, you know, um, if you ever you know, think about or want to start a business, I would love to be involved in something like that with you. And that message came at a time where I, that was the last thing on my mind. I was just, I was really looking at, I was really just feeling sorry for myself and looking at, you know, what other sort of corporate job I, I might be able to get. But when Butch came along, gave me that message, I said, yeah, that's, that's maybe there's, there's something there. And so we met around his kitchen table. We started hashing out the, the idea, and six months later, we started our own uh, waste uh, trucking company. That was uh, November of 1992. And since then, I, I've identified as an entrepreneur uh, ever since. And I, you know, we were fortunate with that company to run it for 22 years and uh, before selling it in 2015 to a, a, a very large uh, publicly traded waste company. And then after my non-compete ran out, I had an opportunity to partner with a private equity firm and put together a similar type company, sort of from the ground, build a platform, and then grow it. and And that was exciting to me. And so we did that, and and just got really lucky, and were able to sell that business in less than three years for, you know, a really nice return. So I, I've just, um, I, I've just, I've, I've been an entrepreneur for a long time now. It's, it's. I think it's who I was born to be, although you wouldn't have known that when I was, you know, a little earlier in my life. And, and now I'm committed to helping entrepreneurs uh, as much as I can to become as big as they can. Yeah, you said something interesting there when you said a messenger came to you, how you described this person as a messenger. And yeah. I, I think we can, all, we can all relate to that, where somewhere out of the blue, someone comes to you at exactly the right time, exactly when you need that certain message. Uh, and yeah, that, that really resonates with me. But I wanted to ask you, uh, first and foremost here, you, know, you identify as an entrepreneur, you work to help entrepreneurs. Let's talk about the book. Um, really interesting sure. title, Ownership, How Getting Selfish Got Me Unstuck. So lots to unpack there. So let's start with what inspired you to write it. Uh, so what inspired me to write it was that I, I, I got an English degree when I was in college, Dave, and I, and I thought, well, wow, one day maybe I'll be a writer. And I wrote sort of on and off, but I never, you know, really published anything. I never committed to it. I was always sort of, it was always sort of in the background. And after uh, I, I was able to sell that first business, I was looking at these goals that I had developed. Um, I had a, I had a 10 year period of goals from the time I was 43 to 53, and then another 10 year from 53 to 63. And I was 49 at the time. And I was looking through and I'm like, oh, there's a book there's books on here and I haven't written a book or even close to a book. And so, um, I just, I, you know, I, I decided that, that that was a goal that I was now in a position to accomplish. And, uh, and, and I, I just, uh, hired a firm to help me with the organization of that and help me understand the process. Cause I had been lacking the discipline, I think, to, to really commit to a book. Um, they showed me their system, and uh, I started writing. And that was in, um, I started writing in April of 2019, I think, and then it was done by 2020. And interestingly, 
I don't know how it was with your book, but interestingly for me, like I went down a path for six months of the book that I thought I wanted to write and then completely switched gears because they basically the editors told me, I don't think this, I don't think this is working. I don't think this is what you really want to do. Um, so then I switched and then I spent six months writing uh, what became ownership. Yeah, with regard to my book, my book was not intentional. I never sat down and said, I'm going to write a book. Uh, that's way too oh. much work. My book sort of happened, uh, I, I like to say by accident, but it was really a, a passion project. And it started with an article and it grew into a series and so forth. But never intended to write a book. But this is about you and your book, Mike. So let me continue on that line of sure. questioning, if you yeah. don't mind. Ownership. Little play on words of ownership. Talk to us about yeah. what, what, what's an ownership. So in my uh, experience... Uh, personally and being around a lot of entrepreneurs as you go through the journey of being an entrepreneur there are um, shifts that are required along the way and um, those shifts might be um, you know strategy shifts they might be mindset shifts they might be uh, uh, training shifts they might be uh, exposure to idea shifts They're, they can come in all sort of shapes and sizes but what happened to me and I think what happens to a lot is that you know we get into it we shift we shift we shift we shift and then we stop and we get stuck um, we we stop shifting because either we think we have it all figured out or we stop shifting because uh, you know the, the 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 result of our previous shifting has got us to a place where you know it sort of just feels like a grind and we don't want to put ourselves through that anymore. So the whole notion in the book is that's normal. Shifts are normal. I use shift instead of pivot because I think pivot, while it's a very popular uh, word and term now, I don't think it really describes what needs to happen, Dave. I, I think, uh, you know, pivots are, to me, pivots aren't motion. They're like, you know, it's like moving around in a, in a circle with a fixed foot, you know, and I don't think that's what, I don't think that's what really needs to happen for most. I think you'd need to be moved, uh, and that's why that's why I use uh, that's why you shift. Yeah, something a little more dramatic, if you will. But then the rest of the title, getting selfish, got right. you unstuck. Talk about that. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so there, again, in my experience, there are a lot of reasons why entrepreneurs do not uh, accomplish all of their goals or become, um, you know, continue to maximize their capabilities over the, the length of their, of their journey. And one of the reasons for me, and I think it's for a lot of people, is we get so wrapped up in putting everybody else first in the business, whether so clients, vendors, team members, you know, whatever, um, that, that, you know, we, we kind of, we kind of position ourselves as the selfless person, like, hey, if something needs to be done, call Mike, you know, or hey, let's run this past Mike, or, or, uh, hey, Mike said that everything needs to run, you know, past him. Um, it, it, you know, we're, we're just sort of we're putting everybody else first. And I think some of it for me, too, was like, oh, it's kind of nice to be kind of the hero, you know. Um, and, uh that feels good. I think it's necessary, like in the dream stage of the business and, and in the early stages. But there comes a point where it's very uh, evident that you need to shift out of that. It wasn't evident to me, though, Dave. So I, for 10 years in the business, I ran it like uh, like it was a baby, like it needed me for every single thing. Um, and when I looked, when I, when, I, when I sort of fell off a cliff um, in, in what I call the break stage, I was looking at why I got there and it occurred to me that one of the reasons was I was avoiding what I was supposed to be doing which is really looking at how to create a bigger and better future for myself and for the business by in immersing myself in this sort of selfless mentality um, because that was easier for me that was that was you know it was a good way for me to feel like I was doing something that uh, valuable, even though I wasn't doing the valuable work that I was supposed to be doing. Yeah, Mike, for folks watching and listening who want to learn more about you, how they can contact you, or how they can get the book, what's your best advice there? The best way to, to find out everything about me, including the book, is at my website, which is my name, Mike Malatesta, M-A-L-A-T-E-S-T-A dot com. 
So Mike, I want, to, I want to talk to you a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey here, and you sort of alluded to it in this last statements that you made, that I hear it a lot from business owners that it's, it's their baby, right? And they have to be, or inevitably are by default, the person, right, who's responsible for everything. Uh, and it's right. the weight of the world on their shoulders. So in terms of getting unstuck, and as we're talking to entrepreneurs who are watching and listening, what would you tell them that they should be doing? Well, I guess I would say first, uh, first and foremost, if that, if if approaching it that way, the way that you describe, gives you a ton of energy and you love that, then just keep doing it. Um, but my experience, personally, and again with a lot of other entrepreneurs, is that they um, set it up that way, and they love it for a while, and then they begin to hate it, and uh, because what used to give them energy now gives them frustration, <laughs> you know, so what used to make them happy now makes them sad. Um, and uh, the, 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 I guess, you know, ultimately, I think the entrepreneur's job is to make the company that they have as, as big as it can be. And I don't use the word big to just mean money. I mean, you've got a team of people that have tremendous capability. And if if you are setting that organization up so that everything is about you, you are probably not uh, using and maximizing all the capability in your business. And you're probably not maximizing your own capability either. And if, if that's got you in a point where you're frustrated, there's a way out of that. You can get past that. Um, you should be getting past that because that is, that's your job. That's your responsibility, and that's what you owe to to everybody on your team and to your business. Gotcha, Mike. We only have about two minutes here to go in this first segment, but I wanted to ask you. You talk about teams, uh, and we can certainly continue this into the second segment. But let's let's just touch briefly here for now on how to build a great team. You know, you're talking about this entrepreneur who feels that maybe they're the only one who can do certain things. How do they let go? And what's the advice for surrounding yourself with great people? How do they do it? Well, um, you know, there, there's, if you want to get right down to it, I think the best way to do that is to have something that you're focused on that only you can do as the entrepreneur. So get really clear about where the, where you make the biggest impact and then set, set up a system in your company so that that allows you to be working on only those things. Once you've done that, it opens up you're, it opens up your eyes to everything else that needs to be done and to the talent and 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 um, and team that you need and you can begin to make better decisions about that and you can begin to be feel better about giving people the autonomy to do what you want them to do Dave and to make the impact that they need to make but when you're so, when you're all in it and you're not doing the things that that really move the business only you are sort of surrogating for all the other people and it's and it's not and, and and there are very few people who in that environment will push through and say no i want to i can do more i want to do more they'll just either sort of dumb down their own expectations or they'll leave and go do more for someone else yeah mike on that note we're going to take a quick break here you don't go anywhere you watching and listening sit tight we'll be right back with more of mike malatesta right after this quick commercial break Dr. Mark and Liz from Marriage Matters, a show that inspires, instills hope, and empowers couples to weather the stresses of married life. Join us each week to hear how couples, real couples like you, have overcome challenges that were hurting their marriages, as well as getting expert advice on ways to nurture a happy and healthy relationship. Tune in Fridays at 4.30 p.m. and Thursdays at 9 a.m. on RVN TV. The new Kentucky Fried Chicken Sandwich with brioche buns, mayo, pickles, and a quarter pound filet as far as the eye can see. Get comfy, it's gonna be a while. This thing's huge. Get the new Kentucky Fried Chicken Sandwich for just $3.99. It's finger licking good.
and welcome back to Behind the Numbers. I'm Dave Bookbinder, and today we're talking with Mike Malatesta, who is the author of Ownership, How Getting Selfish Got Me Unstuck. Mike's also the host of the podcast, How Did It Happen? Mike, welcome back for round two. Thanks, Dave. Glad wanna, to be back. I want to continue the, the theme that we ended the first segment on. You were talking about building great teams. Part of building great teams requires having a really great culture. Talk about how an entrepreneur should think about doing that, especially at the early stages. How do we define it and how do we make it part of the DNA? Well, I think, uh, I mean, at the early stages, it, unless you're really evolved, and I was not really evolved, it, it, to me it's about example, right? You, you, you bring people in uh, who don't know you and you uh, teach them how you think and how you uh, what you believe through example, because you're, you know, you're kind of all, usually you're all kind of working together at that point. I think it gets more difficult the larger you get, and it gets very difficult when you have multiple locations, I found. It's, it's you know, the, the complexity of culture and team building in an organization with the number of people you add and the number of locations you add, it's not like a one plus one equals two sort of thing. It's more like a one plus one equals 10 on the complexity level. And yeah. um, so I think it, the beginning example is easy. And as you grow, um, it's not, uh, it, it's always about example, I guess, but it's, it's becomes much more of a, uh, it becomes much more of a, of a, of a challenge to manage. Yeah. I want to talk about the end game, Mike, exit planning. So you've been through several yeah. exits, and a lot of times entrepreneurs at the very beginning, the last thing they're thinking about is exit. They're getting a lot of advice in their ear telling them that they should always be thinking about a plan, working towards exit, build a business that exits ready. What's your take on it? You've been through it. What's your advice? I think it's good advice to be planning for an exit, even if you have no desire at all uh, to uh, to exit, and I think that's a good. It's a, it's good for a number of reasons. The most important reason is that if you are running your business as if uh, you are planning to sell the business, uh, you are going to run a better business. If you put yourself in a in a potential buyer's shoes and look at your company through that lens you are going to discover a lot of things that uh, a buyer um, might, um, you know, might not, might not want or might be confusing or might make them question something. And you don't, you don't want that when you come to make a decision to sell. And I think, so I think it's, it's makes tremendous sense to be running your business as if it were, as if you were going to market it uh, which I think is different than as if it were for sale, but if you, if as if you were going to market it, because you will, um, you will have a, you will have a more valuable business if you do it. Yeah, for sure. And as I always like to add, you just never know what's going to happen, right? You, the the analogy yeah. of getting hit by the proverbial bus, but there are life events that happen, you know, illnesses and and disputes and whatnot that that could change the course of the business, and you may have to shift, right, and and plan about an exit uh, sooner than you might think. So. Being exit ready, as you talk about here, great idea. Mike, I want to talk about your podcast, How Did It Happen? Tell us a little bit about that and where we can find it. Yeah, thanks. So How Did It Happen is available on any on all of the podcast platforms, Apple, Stitcher, you know, where, wherever, Spotify. Um, I've been doing that podcast for a little over three years, I mean, maybe three and a half years, Dave, and it's... Uh, so it's called How Did It Happen? The reason I call it that is because that's the question I ask everybody to get started. It's a completely unscripted podcast except for that question. And what I'm trying to do is have very uh, meaningful conversations with people who have been successful in, in some discipline of their life. So whether it's business, or whether it's uh, entrepreneur, whether it's philanthropy, whether it's athletics, whether it's uh, medicine, whatever. And what I'm trying to do is dig really deep into that story to get to the root of it, you know, to really tease out why, you know, not only how it happened, but why it matters. And my goal in doing that is to inspire, activate, and maximize the greatness in anyone that's listening. You know, I want them to get something out of that success story, out of the exploration of that success story, 
that helps them either push through some uh, barrier that they have in their mind between where they are and where they would like to get, um, or that to, you know, maybe have a messenger come along, like I've had messengers come along who say something that so resonates with you at a time when you are open to that message that it causes you to take action uh, that you wouldn't otherwise take. So that's, that's, my, that's what I'm trying to do with it. Yeah, so you've been doing this for a while. So what are some of the recurring themes that you're hearing? Well, I think one of the biggest themes, Dave, is that, you know, the, the people that I have on, you might look at them they, like someone would look at you and go, wow, wouldn't it be great to be Dave? And um, yes, it would be great to be Dave. But here's the thing, Dave or the people that I have on my show, when you get into their story, you are going to find for most of them that at some point they were just like you. They are just like you. They are just people. But they had something happen to them uh, along the way, or they made something happen for them along the way that is going to resonate with you. Second thing is humble. People that are successful want to share their success stories with other people. They want to give away uh, anything that they can to help people become what they want to become. It's amazing how giving uh, people are of their time and their energy and their ideas um, that you wouldn't think, you know, you might, you know, you wouldn't, you might not think that you might think like, oh, well, they're too big for me or, or whatever. But my experience is that they're, they're not, they, they want, they want to share. They got, I guess what you'd call an abundance mindset. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's really good stuff. And the other thing that, that I've learned in, in doing my episodes and, and certainly from my life is when an opportunity shows up, just say yes, even if it's scary. Yes. Have, have you seen that, Mike? Yeah, that's how I lived my life for the first, uh, uh, like w when I got out of college, they even got that first corporate job. I said yes to everything because I thought, what you know, that's the way you move up. And it served me very well, you know, up, uh, up to a point, you know, when I get to the selfish thing sort of in the book, there are some, you know, at some point you have to really decide what you want to say yes to, if you're going to maximize your, your business, I think. But, um, but it's a, yes, uh, yes is a very powerful wor word. And I, I wish more people would say it. Mike, tell the folks watching and listening how they can contact you if they want to learn more about you. Yeah, so you can go to my website. As I mentioned before, it's Mike Malatesta, my name, uh, dot com. Uh, you can connect with me on LinkedIn if you'd like, and you can email me, Mike at Mike Malatesta dot com, if that works for you as well. Yeah, I want to jump back to something you just talked about a moment ago about the abundance mindset when you talk about generosity and, and kindness and so yeah. forth. Which, which, which is it? It's a chicken and egg kind of thing, right? Which which comes first? Is is the generosity the precursor to success, or upon achieving success, are these folks becoming more generous? How does that work out in what you're seeing? Uh, I think it's the former and not the latter. I, I, you know, they may be able to be more generous with their money once they've been successful, Dave, but I think along the way they've been generous the whole time, and that's what's helped them get where they get where they are, and it's what's helped them with the team building too, right? G generosity is very important when it comes to uh, culture building, particularly generosity of you, like the real you, the authentic you, and people being able to count on that. Yeah, I, I personally happen to agree with you um, that the generosity piece is what triggers success. Mike, we have about five minutes to go here, and I've got a lot of topics I want to cover. I'm not going to be able to get to all of them, but let, let's talk a little bit about vision and strategy um, in the entrepreneur mindset. I think an entrepreneur generally has a vision, but translating that vision into an executable strategy may be a little bit of a leap. How do we get there? Well, um, most of us don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, it took a long time Dave, because I, when I, you know, when I first got started with Butch, we just, you know, it was just nose to the grindstone sort of approach, bootstrap nose to the grindstone, and I think that was probably what we needed to figure out what our vision actually was, but. What, as your team grows, uh, and as your locations grow, or whatever, you, however you you however your business grows, it becomes more and more port, important to know what you stand for and um, and where you're going. And that's 
I think for me, that was sort of part of my selfish pursuit. I had to figure out at a point where I was sort of really low and looking to turn back, I had to figure out where we were actually going to go. And once I knew that, then putting a framework around it and inviting other people in into the business to help me put that frame framework together and then you know, start with strategy and then put all the tactics together um, became easier. You know, I had thought that I just had to do all that stuff on, on my own for a long time, which was a big mistake. Um, so it just became easier then. And then once we developed that, it was just a matter of, um, you know, conditioning, right? Everybody conditioned to it. We knew where we were every quarter. We met, we discussed, we set new um, targets. It just created a real open environment where everybody brought their best thoughts to the table, and then we, you know, decided which ones we were going to execute on, and then we did. Or yeah, we how, did our best to do so. How important is it to have your your outside constituents, like your your attorney, your accountant, and so forth, your other advisors, as an active part of your strategy sessions, Mike? Uh, that's a good question. I I would I don't. I did not have those uh, folks as an active part of our business growth strategy, with the exception of when we were doing M and A. You know, when we were acquiring businesses, Dave. Yeah. So I'm, I'm maybe I missed the boat on that one, but we, you know, we had really good financial uh, acumen inside of the business, and I thought we, you know, had pretty good, pretty good pretty good minds around the strategy but um so we didn't do we didn't bring in the, the outside resources very often yeah no that's fine certainly if you have the uh the talent in, inside the organization then that makes perfect sense mike what are some of the biggest takeaways that you might share with entrepreneurs as we're winding down the program here in terms of your overall entrepreneurial journey exit planning working with private equity your choice what are the the, the top highlights that you might share well, I guess the first thing would be congratulations on being an entrepreneur because it's a very, you know, it's a very difficult uh, choice to make and it's a very difficult path for for most, you know, the 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 stories that get told in the in the newspapers and the magazines about I call it like Red Bull and pizza one day and a billion dollar valuation the next, you know, those are those are really cool stories but they're so exceptionally rare. The 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 like most of the stories have you can't even put them in the same category. They have they're, 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 you wouldn't even recognize them as as being the same. So that's you, you're doing you're doing very um, meaningful work. I guess um, beyond that, my advice would be don't do it like I did it. You know, don't be this sort of selfless, rugged individualist hero. You know, making it all about you. Um, Get into it. Figure out what you are really good at, like what you move the needle on in the business, and and figure out a way for you to be doing that and to backfill all the rest. And I know that's easy to say, like, oh, it's nice to say, you know, well, people cost money and all that stuff. Yeah, it's it's true. But if you're really moving the needle on your business, you'll have the money, and they will not. They won't be a cost to you. They will be accretive to to you. So I'd say get to that as soon as you can, because the sooner you get to that, um, the faster you'll grow and the better you'll feel. Yeah. Well said, Mike. And on that, we're going to have to wrap. I thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, hope you'll come back and see us again sometime on Behind the Numbers, Mike. Yeah. Invite me anytime. Thanks. It's been a pleasure, Dave. Uh, my pleasure. We've been talking with Mike Malatesta, entrepreneur, guy who's been through exits, author of The Owner Shift, How Getting Selfish Got Me Unstuck, and also the host of the How It Happened podcast. My name is Dave Bookbinder, and I'm the one that my clients turn to when they want to know what their most important assets are worth. You can find me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. Feel free to reach out. I'm always happy to have a conversation. And thank you for watching and listening. We can't do this without you. Please be sure to hit the subscribe button and stay in touch with everything that we're up to here. And we'll see you next week on Behind the Numbers. Take care, everybody.